simply successfully implemented the idea of contrastive learning, and back then achieved the new state-of-the-art performance. Nevertheless, the idea has fundamental weaknesses, its sensitivity to specific augmentations, and its need for very large batch sizes to provide a large set of negative examples. In other words, the reliance on those negative samples is annoying. Bootstrap your own latent. In short, Biol, by researchers at DeepMind, implements a completely new approach to training self-supervised models that hopefully avoids representation collapse. And it is completely weird that it works in the first place. So let's return to our dual view pipeline and think of another idea of how to avoid collapse. The problem is that on both paths we are training the same network, which can just learn to predict the same constant vector for every input. Here's a crazy idea. What if we only train one network and just randomly initialize the second one and freeze its weights? This is pretty much the same idea as in student-teacher models, or knowledge distillation, where the trainable network is called the online network, and the fixed network here is the target network. That way, the online network learns to approximate the predicted targets produced by the fixed target network. But what the hell is happening here? This is nonsense. Yes, it avoids collapse, but the online network is now just learning to copy the predictions of a completely just randomly initialized network. The produced representations can't be good, which is true. The authors of Biol tried this out and achieved 18.8% .8 top 1 accuracy on the linear evaluation protocol on ImageNet with the online network. But here comes the crazy part. The randomly initialized target network only achieves 1.4% by itself. That means, as little sense as all this makes, for a given representation, referred to as the target, we can train a new, potentially enhanced representation, referred to as online, by just predicting the target representation. This experimental finding was the core motivation for Biol, and it was a new approach to self-supervised learning, which is part of the now so-called self-distillation family. Again, Biol trains the online network to predict the target network representation of the same image under a different augmented view. That said, we of course need to build on top of this experimental finding to produce better results than the mentioned 18.8% .8 top 1 accuracy. It is clear that we need to do something against this simply randomly initialized target network. The authors propose the target network to be the same architecture as the online network, but use a different set of weights. The target parameters now are an exponential moving average of the online parameters. That said, if we look closely, there is nothing that prevents collapse. And the authors admit that themselves in the paper. The online and target networks could still, over time, converge to a collapsed representation. But let's take a step back from this black magic, put everything back together, and look at the exact schematics used in Biol. We can here see the exact idea that we have discussed so far. We have an input image and again produce two different views by applying two different sets of random augmentations. We use two different prediction paths, the online and target path, that make use of the same network architecture but different sets of parameters. The target network's parameters are an exponential moving average of the online network. What this more concretely means is that we update the target parameters by scaling its previous parameters by tau and adding the online network's parameters scaled by 1 minus tau. The authors, for example, set tau to 0.99, which means they only change the target parameters slightly by adding the online parameters scaled by 0.01. Since we finally don't have any contrastive examples anymore, we also don't need a contrastive loss. The loss for Biol is simply the mean square error between the normalized predictions and the normalized target projections. Well, that is almost the entire loss. As you can see, we are taking the loss between outputs of two different levels in each branch. Each pipeline, online and target, consists of the following networks. The representation network F, which we will use in our downstream task and a projection network G, as already seen in Simplia. 
The online branch now further includes a prediction head queue, which makes the entire architecture asymmetric between the online and target pipeline. What this means for the loss is that the authors symmetrize it by once feeding view v through the online and view v prime through the target network, and a second time swapping the two views. And that is the entire approach proposed in Bjorn. Training a ResNet 50 using this framework again and evaluating on ImageNet, of course, outperforms all other unsupervised baselines, including our previously discussed Simplia and comes surprisingly close to the fully supervised models. This doesn't mean that Biol always outperforms other models. When pre-training on ImageNet and looking at transfer learning results across different benchmarks, we can see that Biol doesn't always perform the best. Also, it's interesting to see that the authors report reproduced simply results that perform better than those simply taken from the original paper. The authors don't even further elaborate on those findings and are not very consistent with when they use reproduced Simplia and just referenced Simplia results. But that aside, they perform a deeper comparison with Simplia. Arguably the most important reason why we wanted an alternative to contrastive approaches such as Simplia was to reduce the sensitivity that comes with the reliance on negative samples. When it comes to the effects of the batch size, the superiority of Biol to Simplia is obvious. Biol is far less sensitive to smaller batch size than Simplia, which makes sense. When reducing the batch size to only 256 samples, Biol's top 1 accuracy only drops by 0.6%, while for Simplia it drops by 3.4%. The large drop that comes with reducing the batch size to 128 samples is hereby due to the effects on the batch's normalization layer. We have also already discussed how sensitive Simplia is to the set of augmentations applied. We can again see that Biol is, again, far less sensitive to the removal of important augmentations. In the end, when performing cropping only, the top one accuracy of Biol drops by about 13%, while for Simplia, it drops by about 28%. As already mentioned in the previous video, this significant reliance on combining cropping with color jitter in the case of Simplia is because without the color augmentations, the model learns to simply differentiate histograms. Instead, Biol is incentivized to keep any information captured by the target representation into its online network to improve its predictions. In other words, even if augmented views of the same image share the same color histogram, Biol is incentivized to retain additional features in its representation. For that reason, the authors at least believe that Biol is more robust to the choice of image augmentations than contrastive methods. The authors believe so? That's really cool and it obviously empirically works phenomenally, but why does it work? Why does it not collapse? As mentioned, the authors don't have mathematical proof that this approach avoids collapse, but they have made a few empirical observations on what works and what doesn't, and hypothesized a few ideas on why Biol works. Arguably, the most important one is the addition of the predictor and ensuring that it is near optimal. In fact, the authors hypothesize that the main role of Biol's target network is to ensure the near optimality of the predictor over training. They have even found that they can completely remove the target network without collapse by making the predictor near optimal using other methods. Let's try to build some intuition. Remember, Biol uses the projected representation Z of this target network whose weights are an exponential moving average of the weights of the online network as a target for its online predictions using the additional predictor. This way, the weights of the target network represent a delayed and more stable version of the weights of the online network. The authors perform several ablation studies to develop an intuition of the importance of the right combination of the exponential moving average target network and predictor. In the left table, we can see how the model performs under different EMA computations. The first case, tau equals 1, is the exact experiment I described in the beginning, where the target network is a randomly initialized network 
that is never updated. The last case with tau equals zero describes the case where the target model is an exact copy of the online network, directly leading to a collapsed representation. The other cases just describe the search for the optimal tau parameter. That said, it was later confirmed that the exponential moving average is not necessary. You can have the target network as a direct copy of the online network. That is, if the predictor is updated more often or has a larger learning rate compared to the backbone. But it still provides training stability that can even, somehow, be used in SimClear and actually boosts its performance. Okay, now the right table shows the effects of 1 adding negative samples, which actually hurts performance, and 2 removing the predictor, thus directly computing the loss between the projected representations of the online and target networks. Nevertheless, all this does in theory still not completely avoid collapse. It just makes it super difficult and unstable to get there. But okay, back to business. We are almost done. We have now understood how this new family of self-supervised learning works. We have had a look at Biol, which is part of the self-distillation family that uses two neural networks, referred to as online and target networks, that interact and learn from each other. The great advantage of this approach is that it achieves great performance while not relying on negative pairs. So how can we further improve upon this idea? What technology has been taking over every domain of machine learning and is leading to amazing results? Correct, transformers. We are now finally at the point where we can understand this visualization. If you want to know how one of the most recent state-of-the-art models works and what insights we can get from it, have a look at the next video. We'll cover the famous Dino paper by Mathilde Caron et al. from Facebook AI Research. And if it is not up yet, don't forget to subscribe to not miss the upload.